Hello. Hi everyone. Hi, Bill Peters. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my Instagram live. Oh, hey, girl. Um, oh my God, I'm doing, I'm doing all those parody videos of people with their live Instagram, like. <laughs> Hi, Chuch. Hi, husband, Paul. Hey, family. Um, how's everybody doing? Happy Jar of Hearts Day! Oh my gosh. What a big, what a big day. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, it's really good. Um, to be seen. I can't see any of you, um, but I can see all your messages. Thank you for all the hearts. Thank you for being so sweet. Thank you for all being here. Um, I feel like it was appropriate to um, make today really special for a bunch of reasons. Uh, one is because today's the 10 year anniversary of Jar of Hearts. It was actually released today, 10 years ago. I'm going to get into that story. Uh, and also, it was the first day of my career because I feel like most of you in here are going to know this story. I'm going to try to tell like an even more detailed version of it. But um, I really was a waitress the day before this song came out 10 years ago today and um, took off work today 10 years ago to go to So You Think You Can Dance. And, you know, we put the song on iTunes. Anyway, I'm gonna tell the whole story, but I think it's like the most important day of my life, aside from when my daughter was born, um, really because it was the be beginning of everything. I mean, my life, if it's a book, you know, has chapters like everybody's life. And um, this day was a brand new chapter, but even like a brand new, volume it was like the part in a book where it's like a blank page and it's like huge change you know huge part um i just like got catapulted into this career into this lifestyle into this um performing i was never a performer before this i mean other than like high school musicals um <laughs> i um there's a lot of things that started today um, so it's been a whole decade of getting to just be this version of me and I'm so grateful for it. So that's why I put out this, um, little video. I hope you guys saw it already. I posted it earlier. Um, I sang it in quarantine, um, a couple weeks ago and, um, put in all these memories of me in 2010 performing it on television because I was so lucky I was able to perform it on I think every television show that happened in 2010 and 11, I was there. Um, my favorite being in Germany in a boxing ring with my piano on fire um, for reasons I can't tell you. Um, but there were so many memories and so I was really excited to put together this video of like, you know, the memories happening during the video and like, I can't watch it without crying. I mean, obviously like it's my life and my memories, but it makes me so emo because um, I remember it all so clearly. And even though my life looks so different now with like, you know, becoming a mother and being sort of under wraps for a couple years, like I just remember it so vividly. Um, so I think you're all here for a story. So I'm gonna get to the story and then I have a special guest that's gonna join us in a little bit. Um, so I kind of wanna remember and go back in time 10 years ago. Uh, I was working at a restaurant in Los Angeles 
called Melrose Place Cafe. I don't know if anyone remembers that. It was only a restaurant for a short amount of time. It was on Melrose Place across from Monique Ullier, the store. Now it's called um, Fig and Olive. And um, I was the manager there. And this was like my fifth job in the LA. I had been living there for a bunch of years and I had not been um, pursuing music. I knew I was a songwriter. I'd been writing songs since I was 15. I'd been singing since I was born. Um, but I just didn't sing in hairbrushes and think like I was gonna be the artist. I thought, you know, maybe it would be someone else singing my songs because I was so shy and, and um, nervous all the time and didn't perform. So like, why would I perform it, you know? But I had written a song called Jar Full of Hearts on December 29th in 2009. So just a couple months before this, I had written this song and, you know, people ask me all the time, like, did I know that was the song? Like the answer is no. And all my songwriter friends out there, I'm, I'm sure you know too, like all our best songs, like we don't really know. I mean, they all come from us and we think all of the, we always think the last song we just wrote is our best song. And um, so for me to know it was like spectacular, I had no idea. And, um, but I knew I liked it enough that when this opportunity came with these managers and this magical story um, where my best friend posted a video of me singing and her dancing. And um, these two guys emailed me the next day and said like, hey, do you have a manager? And that's like a very Hollywood story. I've told that story a hundred times um, of sort of how this got started. Like I'd like to think that all these stars sort of started to align. And then June 30th was like the lightning in a bottle. but slowly from January of 2010 to June of 2010, like things were happening. I was doing some of the footwork. Like I had recorded a demo. I made a demo of this song. We changed it from Jar Full of Hearts to Jar of Hearts. Um, it was the first time I ever heard myself recorded with like harmonies and, and so professionally, like I remember being so excited about just the sound of it. I didn't have a song that ever sounded so cool with me singing in it. But all the while, my friends know this, like I didn't think I was gonna be the artist. I thought it was just like, you know, a really cool opportunity. I'm singing it, but like, I don't know. Like I really didn't know what was gonna happen with it. I'm, I'm just being totally honest. I had this demo of like three songs. One of them was Jar. And, um, and I thought, you know, it was a very cool thing that was happening, but it was kind of slow. Like it was like a couple months of like go in the studio when you're not working because I was a waitress full time. Anybody who's living in LA knows that when you're chasing your dream, you're working one to three jobs to pay your rent and to pay your bills. And I'll tell you one quick little side story. I had, um, I had this job and I would work two shifts and I would make 1000 uh, $980 every month and my bills were exactly $2,000 and I was very very nerdy with like spreadsheets and and Excel sheets and things and so just because I wanted to make it in LA I would take every penny I made and I would you know pay my bills and then I would always have about $20 left over after paying my bills and I would go to the 101 cafe I mentioned this a lot in my my um, career and I'd go get a waffle brownie Sunday and I would treat myself to this waffle brownie every time I made it in LA one more month. Um, so that's what my life looked like before this all happened, guys. I'm like sitting alone at the 101 Cafe in LA, eating my waffle brownie Sunday, going, okay, I made it another month, like, let's see what happens next. And I, you know, I can't say I wasn't terrified or wouldn't call home crying to my parents and my parents who are awesome would be like, come home, we'll take care of you. like. Don't be so sad, you know? And I'd be like, no, I didn't, you know, like, I don't know, something's here and I gotta get it and I haven't tried hard enough. And I, and I, something would always sort of keep me, keep me going. And um, anyway, so I uh, spent a couple months making this demo, collecting these songs and, uh, and for free, everybody was working for free. There were no, no uh, contracts signed, like nobody knew who I was. And here I am just a little waitress CP. And I remember a couple cute details that I'll tell you that I've probably never talked about. Um, one is um, when the song was finished, I showed my favorite people, like my closest friends, like, hey, look at this cool song I just did. 
And um, the first person I showed was my best friend, Kelty, who I talk about all the time, my fairy godmother. And um, she freaked out and she did something I'm going to mention in a second. But I also showed some of the people who worked um, on Melrose Place because I would feed um, from my cafe, like all the shops that were on the street that I worked on. And um, a lot of hair salons and like art galleries and stuff like that. And so I, they would all come like every day and I would feed them or I would deliver their food to them like to Mark Jacobs one time. I delivered their food every day. Cut to the day I got to go in there and get a dress for a red carpet, but we'll get to that. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I remember showing my demo on an iPod, like a teeny iPod to a couple people that worked on the street with me. And they were like, Christina, this is gonna change your life. One of the guys named Jonathan, who I've not seen since 2010, um, he started to cry. And I was like, uh, bro, like, what, what, why are you crying? And he was like, Christina, this is gonna change your life. And, and, I'm, and I'm so honored to like hear this. And I was like, what? Like I just had no clue. If anyone knew me in 2010, you knew I had no clue. And, um, and so what happened about five or six days before June 30th of 2010 is Kelty, who I sent my song to as my best friend and said, Hey, best friend, look how cool this song came out. Like I sound awesome. I'm singing harmonies with myself. How cool is this? I said, please don't show this to anyone. And what began to happen were the chain of events that completely changed my life. So it was a Friday. I remember because I was so exhausted and I had been working two shifts and I remember getting a phone call from Kelty and I had pulled over, I had this little white Mini Cooper and I had pulled over on the side of the street because Kelty had emailed the song to her best friend growing up in Canada, Stacy Tukey, who happened to be the choreographer on the show, So You Think You Can Dance. And I can't wait to um, hear someone else's point of view of this story, but I'm just going to give you mine. And uh, and so Kelty, I said, hey, best friend, like, please don't show this to anyone. Like, obviously, it's just a demo, blah, blah, blah. So she immediately emailed it to Stacy and said, hey, Stacy, this is my friend Christina M. I love this song. And maybe one day you can play it on your show. And so Stacy says, how about Wednesday? And that was that upcoming Wednesday was June 30th. And we had me and my studio managers, these two guys who were like believing in me, but like I hadn't signed with them and they were working for free and everybody's like, let's maybe do a thing. I called them. I called, well, I called my parents first. Let's be honest. I'm on the side of the road. I'm crying. I'm like, oh my God, my son's going to be on TV. What does that even mean? I'm a waitress. So I pull over. I talk to Kelty. I'm crying. Stay pulled over. I call my mom. She's down the shore. I still remember, she remembers. It was like this whole thing. I was like, mom, oh my God, my song's gonna be on TV. And then I called the guys, my two managers, Tom and Ryan. I said, hey, this thing is happening. They're like, I'm sorry, what? Like, this is a huge opportunity. And back in 2010, this was a new thing. Like people playing songs on shows, like, you know, like I feel like that was one of the beginning, you know, times that this was like a thing. And the songs on So You Think You Can Dance were so prestigious. Like, so, but I didn't know, I didn't watch the show. I wasn't a dancer. I mean, I had no idea this whole world. And so I just said, yeah, this thing is happening. It's gonna be great, okay? We probably don't need to do any work, right? Like, we'll just, you know, they'll just play it on the show. And like, my managers are like, um, no, we have like five days to set this up. So what happens next, because I believe in all things that are magical being part preparation and work. Um, my managers really became my managers, I think, in that moment. And they started to assemble a team, um, a girl in San Francisco named Philly. She was just an intern. She was like, I got this. She was tech savvy. So she was like, okay, she was geotagging. If people were gonna look up lyrics, it would go to my song. And we had to get it on iTunes. But back then it took a really long time to put music up on iTunes. Like, I don't know if it's the same way with Spotify, but like it doesn't happen very quick. And so like my uh, manager, Ryan, had to pull a favor with this guy, Jordan, at iTunes, who he was friends with and was like, hey, man, this crazy thing's happening in five days. I know it's the weekend, but like we got to get this song up on iTunes. Um, so the single is sitting on iTunes. I didn't have a record label, everybody, I'm just by myself, right? Little waitress seeps. So I've just made up a label called Perry Lane Records and <laughs> put it out on 
that. Um, what else did we have? Oh, a picture. You know, the picture of me holding that jar. My friend Lonnie, she was like a photographer friend of mine. And I was like, hey, dude, I have like three days to, you know, get this done. And I need a picture. So I went to her house and I'm wearing her clothes. Like, I think that was like her jumpsuit or something. And we just have a jar with red um, food coloring in it. Like, you know, red water. I, I don't even know what that is. And so I'm like staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know the cover and um and then we put um i guess all these pieces in place and then we just waited and what happened was i mean i went to work on monday and tuesday um and then june 30th came and i told my boss like hey this really cool thing is happening and I should take off work, I think, you know, and so no one else worked at the cafe. So he covered my shift. His name is Kia. And um, he covered my shift that day and was like, girl, I'll go have a great time. So I got my hair done for the first time. I got my makeup done for the first time. Like this wasn't the thing I had ever done before. I wore Kelty's dress. It's this little black dress that her and I deemed the luckiest dress on earth. So we shared it for a couple years. <laughs> and I think Kelty wore it to all her auditions after that. And um and I got my hair done, I got my makeup done, and I drove, Kelty and I, to CBS Studios in LA. And I think it was like five o'clock, it, it, because it was eight o'clock on the East Coast, and five o'clock in LA. And we sat in the very last row of the bleachers at the studio. They took our phones away from us because it was, you know, a live TV show. And um, we sat in the last row and there were a couple other performances and other songs and stuff. And then all of a sudden Jar comes on. And, you know, a lot of people have always asked me about that memory. And I remember it so viscerally, just being the loudest I had ever heard my voice. Like it was just so loud. And I look over and Kelty's hysterically crying. And I wasn't, I was really like, shocked I think I was really in shock but I I didn't I didn't miss a, a second of it it was only a minute and a half that they played of the song and uh, I'm gonna wrap this up real quick and then bring in my my special guest and uh, and so what happened next because the song was out there right so a minute and a half of jar was performed by Billy Bell and Catherine McCormick the choreography was so uh, Stacy Tukey the show was so you think you can dance these are all the the art forms. This is what I say a lot too. Like it wasn't just music. It was me singing. It was music I'd written. It was choreography that was made. It was these beautiful dancers that were dancing it. It was a lightning in a bottle and this moment that exploded. And all of a sudden my song exists in the world and I'm the artist. And we had no idea for about 45 minutes after the performance, which only had been live in New York, so the Midwest and the West Coast hadn't even seen it yet. And Kelty and I are just talking to people backstage, just say hi to Stacey, I'm like, thanks for picking my song, how cool. I'm gonna go back to work tomorrow as a waitress, see ya. And Kelty and I leave the studio and they hand me back my phone and I had, sorry, my phone's crooked. I had thousands of Facebook requests, like seven, 10,000 Facebook requests. And I'm like, <laughs> what is what and then my manager had been calling me a hundred times and was like Christina you are number 36 on the chart and I was like what chart what does that even mean like what is what's happening and <laughs> what happened next I mean I can only sum up as being you know the craziest whirlwind magical adventure I've ever been on in my life um from that moment uh I was catapulted as as an artist I was I was just I existed. I was a waitress and then I was not a waitress anymore. I mean, I tell this story too. I didn't quit my job and like run off into the sunset. I covered all my shifts. My my boss hired someone new. I made sure everyone was okay and cuz I'm um, you know, a dork, but I really never went back to work. I didn't sleep for about two or three nights. I don't know if anyone on this live right now is one of the people that I responded to, but I got so many thousands of, of emails, Facebook messages and messages that I wrote you all back. I mean, I laid, I stayed up all night and wrote everybody back. I had no idea that like the effect that this song was, was having on everybody and it wasn't small. It was like really big hearted emotions, like really big life events that people were going through and were affected by this. 
And so like, how do I not write them back? I'm like reading like, you know, these people that, that went through these crazy things and because of my song, da, 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 da. Like it was so special and I really didn't sleep for, well, about five years, but I definitely didn't sleep for three days. I flew to New York City with my manager, Tom. I signed a deal with Atlantic Records and my friends, the rest is history. So that is my story of June 30th, um, 2010, the most exciting day of my life. And I'm gonna bring on my friend now. Thank you all for sticking around. I'm sorry, I'm just like blabbering on, but um, I wanted to just tell you guys that and bring you back in time with me so you can feel how special it really was. And obviously the next 10 years of my life have been such a gift and such a blessing and I've done everything I ever wanted to do. And specifically my daughter who's asleep right now is my, my favorite gift, but I um, wanna bring on my fairy godmother the reason why I think I'm even here, uh, my best friend, Kelty, and I want her to tell you guys a little bit of her point of view. So here we go. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> Christina left out a very... <laughs> Happy Jar of Hearts Day to all the penguins. Hi. I'm so proud of you crying already. Like, I'm oh every I, I can't believe you wore that shirt. Kelty made that shirt, everyone. Okay, so Christina obviously didn't have any merch. And <laughs> we ordered these on, like, Zazzle.com. There's, like, four of them in the world. And it was this picture. Do you remember when you had these pictures? It's like, I think it was within that first three months you were talking about. You were like... Yeah. Kind of decided. That was my first photo shoot ever. I never had a photo shoot before that. These are definitely borrowed clothes. You didn't own anything. <laughs> anyway, made this. And what's great about this shirt is it says Christina Perry rocks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love this shirt. Um, you forgot uh, some details of the story, by the way. Hey, great. I want to hear yours. Everybody wants to hear yours. First of all, I think you should tell everyone that you didn't have a bank account. You kept I your didn't. money literally in a jar. <laughs> I remember so many times going into your lip. I mean, she had this tiny, tiny little studio apartment. Mm -hmm. What was framed on my walls of my only pictures? Twilight books. <laughs> All right? Yeah. No one believes that. Everyone thinks I make that up, but that is true. Definitely had them. So she had this like, little, I mean, it was a jar or a box or something. And I would see you after you'd come home from these shifts and you'd be like, five dollars 25 cents oh. like you really were so broke like yes yeah. i was working my butt off girl and i remember after the so you thinking dance you're like oh i got everyone to cover my shift and never went back to work but i remember us having this conversation of like should i quit my job you were like yeah. i don't I, I think i should go back to work and your manager was like we need to fly to new york you have 10 offers for record deals and you were yeah. like but should I go waitress? Like, I'm just not sure. <laughs> I should. I don't big. Like, oh my God, it was so crazy. I know, I know. It's a, it's a blur, honestly, but. I also think that we should, um, but you said it sitting in the back row. It was like the, sh the worst seat you <laughs> could been. And yeah. now that we've both been in Hollywood, <laughs> bit we've realized like how the seating goes like when I came yeah. to your concert I knew you so I got a great seat you know yeah but no one cared about us we were like hey can we have two tickets do you think you can dance and I think Stacy gave us her tickets or some I don't know yeah. somehow we but there was like the whole section where like it was such a big show at the time like right. the act celebrities were and the choreographers were and like mm -hmm. the best Paul Abdul judges it was like the back row like you leaned yeah. your chair back and we <laughs> fell off the bleacher like it was the <laughs> I do remember that I do remember being in the very last row but I didn't know there was an option to ever not be in the last row of my life I was just a waitress we'd only been in the back row but my right. favorite part of this story is when you say like you've never performed this is so true penguins and Christina Perry fans so I have two memories that I want to share that I haven't shared before the first is Many, many years ago, like so, so, so long ago, I was dating a guy that was in panic and we went to Philadelphia to see their concert. And 
backstage and they were like on stage and we had seen the show so many times that we were like meh so we were in the dressing room mm -hmm. and there was like a warm-up piano there and I was like you're getting discovered tonight. <laughs> Remember that I was like, you were always trying to get me discovered. Thank you. It worked. She was playing. She was playing. And she was like, just in the dressing room, wailing. Like, <laughs> I've been meaning to say to you, my heart is not black and blue. Like, we were just the only one there, like, in some arena. And I was like, someone's going to hear her and walk by. And I specifically remember later on that year being in an... Uh, elevator with someone and I was like someone should sign Christina Perry she's a star and they were like there's nothing special about her and I thought I think about that all the time mm. if you had listened to those people you were not a really formed artist when you got launched into this world like mm -hmm. so many people are I've had 15 records and I've performed and open for everyone like you were such a different kind of artist you were one of those first sort of like millennial artists you know, that like just the internet discovered you. Right. But I just think a lot about how it's so easy to hear from other people, like what you should do or who you are and how you are just like, <laughs> like, I don't want to listen to anyone and I'm not going to do my thing. And your whole career has been that. People were like, you should wear, I mean, for me, I'm like, please wear a color for God's sake. Like stop wearing black. <laughs> Never listen to me. Um, but like, you know, you just, you just always, even when you were willing to lose everything to make it authentically you, which I love. Mm, thank you. And then the second thing is that when Christina decided she was, she had been writing these demos and I was like, you got to start playing girl. You got to get out in town. You got to go to LA, go to some open mics. We knew nothing about anything. We didn't have oh, to yeah. So we Googled like open mic nights <laughs> for Lake or something. And I, we, Christina and I go to the open mic night. I wish I remember. I was where. furious at you, by the way. Do you remember how angry I was in the car? I was like drinking tea. And I was like, how could you make me do this? I don't so want to do this. She's like, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. I'm nervous. I don't, I don't want to. So we go into this open mic. There's like seven people there. They're all men. All men. <laughs> Because it was what? Do you remember? A comedy show. It was a you show. made me play Jar of Hearts at a male <laughs> comedy show. Okay? And so I she, did it, by the oh way. My, sitting there, and they're like, this. all these guys are coming up to, like, practice their comedy, and they're like, yucky, 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 yucky. Like, <laughs> there's, and they're like, all right, next up, Christina. And she's out there, and she's just singing the saddest song you've ever heard. Like, oh, my God. No one related. Everyone in the audience were Jar of Hearts. They were all terrible guys. And, and I'm the, singing a song about all of them. And the song ends and everyone, and I'm like, it! and the guy's like, it's silent. I mean, it was so traumatic for you. So I understood why you like, me. I've yeah. never played since. Yeah, I mean, that's probably why I don't tell that story and why I skip over that I've never performed ever because I'd like to delete that from my memory. But it is pretty funny now, 10 years later, it's okay, I forgive you. Um, everything really worked out. Maybe yeah. maybe I really like, maybe that really helped me with like developing a thicker skin to get through this industry. I mean, yeah, you never know. Now, did you ever tell <laughs> who Jar of Hearts is? I'm pretty sure everybody knows, especially him and his whole family. Like everybody knows. They know. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, because my favorite story ever was, I'll tell this and then we should go. I got to perform it one time uh, in a room with him in it. I don't know if I've ever talked about this. Uh, it was my first show in Philadelphia. It was my hometown show. I was opening for James Blunt. It was the first time I was playing like a real concert. And him and his whole family were there. But the best part is I didn't see him until I played Jar. So I played like five songs before Jar. I may have played six or seven total. I don't remember. And I, I, my whole band leaves and it's the last song of my set. And my whole family was there too. It was the biggest show I ever had. It was like, there were 88 Perry's there. I remember my managers like sweating cause we had to like put them all in a room or something after anyway. So, uh, I'll never forget. I was, I was sitting on stage and the spotlights on just me and I'm about to play jar and I'm telling the story of it to everybody. Like the story of, of what had just happened because so I think can dance had like just happened. 
and um and i'm telling the story and while i'm saying it he just like steps into the spotlight i mean into like a light in the room like he was lit <laughs> and i was like like it almost like messed me up like because i was telling my story and then you know it didn't like i sort of recovered and and then i took a deep breath i remember because i always say this is you know jar of hearts or whatever very dramatically and i remember stopping and thinking to myself sorry if children are watching i remember thinking literally this is the best fuck you i've ever said ever this that was my thought and then i played it and i stared right at him and it was a wonderful victorious moment cheers <laughs> oh that guy but again blood. listen this is why this is why i believe in the universe and everything happening for a reason because thank goodness that guy was terrible and that i wrote jar of hearts and then my whole life is here like i always think about that too i have no regrets as a you know 33 year old woman now like for any of the missteps i've taken in my life of all you know not to make it super cheesy but have all led to a thing that has like you know contributed to this incredible dream of mine and i'm a songwriter i mean all my songs are true you know like if i had just like the best life ever and the best relationships ever there's no way i'd be here there wouldn't be people here listening to this you know or relating to me so i'm grateful for all the pain because i have turned it into music my whole career so and honestly with that hair like if you hadn't had hardship i would hate you like no <laughs> have that luscious natural hair that grows like a weed like it's so unfair i have been growing out my hair since jar of hearts was released and it's only been long I had 100 haircuts <laughs> it really is well listen <laughs> listen i'm gonna I'm, I'm i think we should wrap it up how do you not have like i i just am so jealous of you oh thanks kelsey look you know i'm italian so listen okay. i want to wrap it up um, because everyone's been here for 30 minutes listening to us talk. I, um, I love you. You know, I love you more than anything ever. I'll never forget our moments, these moments specifically. Um, definitely wouldn't have my career. I'm certain. And we've talked about this. You disagree. I completely believe without you because there were so many things you did more than just giving the song to Stacey. You know what? You've always believed in me. You were my only fan for a good couple of years. You were the only person who watched my videos. You were the first person to ever make a t-shirt of me. I mean, hello. So thank you. Not to be super cheesy, but I love you and I'm grateful for you and this day. Happy jar of hearts. I'm so proud of you, Christina. Thank you. All right, everyone. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Jar of Hearts Day to all of you who have bought, supported, downloaded, streamed, listened, watched. Thank you for all your views and all your love and support. I love you so much, and I hope to see you guys really soon. Please stay healthy. Please stay well. Please wear a mask, and I'll see you guys soon. Team Jacob! <laughs> Bye.